on 18th Street, the heart of Chelsea, between 5th Avenue and 7th Avenue. Uh, two restaurants that I love, two chefs, two owners that I've known for a long time. The Gander, Jesse Shanker used to have her set in the West Village. I loved, we filmed there. He's a super talented kid. And Rouge Tomate 2.0, they were uptown, we filmed there. I love these people. They moved downtown to a smaller, more intimate space. Pascaline Lepapier, master sommelier, rock star. Everybody knows Pascaline, she's a huge part of the story. Food's really healthy, Andy Bennett's the chef. He was at the Old Rouge as the chef de cuisine. Insanely tasty food, insanely good for you with a wine list that's one of the greatest wine lists in America, with one of the greatest Psalms. So we're not leaving 18th Street, we're in a two-block stretch. Stay tuned. I'm Mike Colomeco, industry insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line designed for preparing meals at home. Jesse Shanker. Michael Mecca. Good to see you Me again. Too. You were my old neighbor in West Village. Yeah. Reset was a great restaurant. That was like your coming out party. I was. You'd been doing stuff in Harlem. You came down. Reset was this little tiny shoe box with a kitchen about the size of this table. Literally. Three <laughs> stars. Two. Three. Two, two, but so good, such a good two. See, that's what I mean. It's yeah. like one of those reviews that it, it, read, was, it read like a three. Read story. like three, yeah. and it just drew people. Yeah. So from that point on, you were packed. 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 You know, after that review from uh, you know from the Times, we were busy, right? And I was restrained. I was right. restrained on every level. I had inquiries for private events. People wanted to do lunch. So my partners and I were like, we gotta find a space where we could basically do everything that we're set can't do. So what are we making, Milanese? Okay, we got a Milanese. A Milanese. I need a bigger kitchen. I wanted to do more. Um, you know, so it was like literally three years. Legal dollars down the drain on leases right. that fell through. So finally we found the space, Allison 18. Um, and it just fell in my lap. We actually take the pork ribs, the chop, take it off the bone, uh, pound it out. Traditional panne, just flour, egg wash. Flour, egg wash, season bread drums. Yeah, so I just said, I'm gonna open up a restaurant that is everything the reset's not. So that's pure marrow? So it's marrow that we, we, blanched. we blanch. Herb, salt, pepper, compound Spit marrow. The base is chicken feet, and then enrich it with the bones of the, the chop. So I'm, I'm heavy on the salt. Make it rain, right? <laughs> yes. Obviously, a nice squeeze of lemon, the marrow. Run into the Sally for a second. Oh, so it goes up there. We have these fingerlings that have been crushed and lightly fried. Some pickled fennel, pickled onions, all torn herbs. We got basil, cilantro, and this is a vinaigrette made with fennel oil and a little bit of ground mustard. So you have a lot of herbaceousness, crunch, acidity, delicioso. So what are we picking up here? All right, so we're rocking the cod right here. It's the plan of Cocovan in that fall into winter time. So red wine, maitake mushrooms, braised thigh meat of the chicken. And then the cod acts as the white meat. What's our best friend right here? Butter, right? Mantequilla. Fresh herbs in there, yeah? There's a pinch of salt. This little guy, a little onion. That red wine glaze, kind of like that cocoa vine. Right, that's your play on it. You gotta try the bread. Some, I, I feel like. A bread service, everyone's restaurants get bread service, right? We do charge for them. Okay, five bucks for four pieces. They are the best Parker House rolls in New York City. It's like a brioche? It's like a brioche. That's what it is. meets challah. Melted butter with thyme and garlic. Okay. Let's get a close up of this on the other side. Fire tuna crudo for the bar. 
Was it you that had like house-made tater tots on a menu or was that somebody else? No, we do the tater tots. You do, right? Yeah, man. You still do them? Yeah. How do you make the, the apple rye? What is it? It's difficult. Braised brisket, caraway, caramelized onions, apple, cider vinegar, mozzarella cheese cut, like strips in between, roll it into a log, freeze the log, and then cut them into rounds. Flour, egg wash, potato flakes. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It's hard. I mean, this, the th things have changed so much in the city. Just in, just since everyone was set, it's a different beast between social media and rents and insurance and, and labor. And you got to be at that point where you are giving people something that they feel great about eating and the experience that they have. It's not just about the food anymore. It's not just about the atmosphere. It's the package. People need to come in and feel good, you know, and, and it's hard. And if you don't bring in... You know, if you don't bring in and embrace the neighborhood, or if the neighborhood doesn't embrace you, right. good luck. Good luck. This one is our delicious chocolate pudding with a red pepper ice cream. I put a few dollops of creme fraiche. You were in the kitchen when we filmed at Aquavit. Certainly, yes. In I pastry. Was, yes, I was. Super yeah. strong kitchen. Definitely, that's where I learned the most. I mean, Emma Bankston, who's. God bless Emma, guy, yes. go girl. She yes. had been the pastry chef, so complete badass, and then she morphed over to take over the chef chef job. Yes. So that pastry chef kitchen was just on fire. It was crazy. Of course, we were always on top of everything. I still remember that bird's nest ice cream thing that you yes. made. It was like 62 yes. elements. Yes. So yes. it's a little, yes. a little simpler here today. Um, this is our baked white chocolate. It's just white chocolate, and we just pop it in the oven until it caramelizes. Mm. And it gives you this really crispy texture. So we garnish this with a little bit of blue corn flour. What is that? Blue corn flour? Yeah, yeah. That's blue corn flour. Yeah, it smells really nice. It adds um, color to the plating as well. Yeah, it makes it look exotic too. <laughs> so the next thing here is um, Confit of red pepper skin. Pepper makes sense. Yeah. So uh, we use and save as much of the red pepper as we can. So we uh, as we peeling the skin, we save the skin and use it as the garnish and we make these uh, like little ribbons right here. We also put cocoa nibs in here too. Again, texture. For a little texture, yeah. And then flavor, but texture. And flavor, yes. And that is literally gold dust. Yes, and we just swirl it around like so. It does look pretty cool. Yeah, and then it we- get your attention. We place it in the middle right here. And the last thing that we put is a uh, twill. Damn, gee, that is beautiful. Yeah. A little bit of garlic oil. Talk about the menu. How would you describe what you're doing here? Okay, so the gander to me is like, you know, I like to use the word scrumptious. I like the word, I like to say we're fine, but, um, you know, but rustic. You know, like I like to pull, I'm still very seasonal. Um, I still use an enormous amount of technique. But what you get on the plate is something that is not overdone. You know what I mean? It's really, you know, I think I show a lot of technique through a strain. So this is our version of tartare, okay, Mike? Sea trout, lemon, olive oil, chives, salt, that's it, packed into a mold. What do you think of when you think beef tartare? You think mustard, cornichon, caper. We're gonna do pickled trout roe instead of the raw egg, right? We're gonna do spicy Japanese mustard instead of Dijon and Tabasco, we kind of mix it up. And then instead of seeing it traditionally with a, like a crouton, we do the skin chip, teach your own. I'm, I'm into cooking stuff that makes people feel good. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's what this is. Yeah, I mean, I, you wanna fill this dining room every night, let's get them to come back. Let's, Give people what yeah. they want, and, and, and which the is New York's delicious totally. and seasonal and fresh. And, and like, there, it doesn't have to be like I, I, I. Sometimes you lose track and you lose touch of who you are and what's going on with the just the struggle with New York and fighting yeah. for this and fighting for that. I don't need my ego stroked. I got stars. I got the best young chef this on that, and I don't need that. I want to just cook and I want to make people happy. And like when I see people's faces when they eat that calamari salad, that's that ten years ago I'd have been like, what is that? I would never do something like that, you know. And now I'm doing it, embracing it. Forget about it. I do an amazing burger in the bar room. So I got my burger going right here, right? Cooking on the plancha. I'm gonna steam it a little bit, help cook it. Once I get it nice and rare and crispy on both sides, then I move it to the grill and lit it to get the smoke. I finish it with the smoke. It's dry age, it's a, it's a great cut, it's a good potato roll. Everything about it is simple and delicious, but it's effing great and it nails it. When people eat that and they're like, that's the best burger I had, Bingo. that makes me feel good. Bingo. Two duck, pork, two bronzina. Long Island duck. We go cold pan, yeah? Cold pan. Cold pan, right on the heat. Render it slow, nice and crispy. Uh, braised cabbage, persimmon, a little duck, duck leg croquette with torn Brussels sprout leaves and a little bit of uh, red wine vinaigrette. Yeah. 
I don't want to categorize it, but Reset was, I don't want to say more fine dining than this, but that was more tweezerish than what you're doing here, it was, yes? It was more tweezerish. It was more, you know, I went out there and I knew that, you know, I was 27 years old. Right. I wanted to do something, right? I opened up on this little block in West 12th and Greenwich Street. Nobody knew me, you know, and I just cooked and I took a chance. It, you know, people noticed and it took off knock on wood. Yeah. Um, but you know, like as you grow as a chef, you kind of evolve. Like right. you, you peak, you know. Right. Like in, right. you think about it in the in the in the mid '90s, I wanted to pile the plate as high as I could. You know, thanks Portal for that. <laughs> right. you know, You're the architect. And and, and 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 you know, and then now, now as I evolve, I've kind of peaked down. Now I could take a tomato, perfectly perfect tomato in September, slice it, a little salt and pepper and olive oil, and that to me is beautiful. Paradise. You know what I mean? And before I had to take the seeds and do something, dehydrate the skin. It's not, you know, I've, I've evolved. <laughs> You've I don't, grown up. You know what I mean? And, and I like to cook now what I want to cook for my family Sunday nights. Yeah, baby. We're going to move this guy up here. And you know, only cook in New York, it doesn't use an oven. A little caviar. So the first time I came here, there was this salad. Remind me what it was, because it was it was the, almost the calamari salad. it was so fun. It was a, it was almost like you could have gone to like Applebee's or some place in a mall and had something similar that yes. would have been horribly bad. Yes, I mean most of this menu. Anyway, it was wonderful. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was actually an inspiration from Cheesecake Factory. Clean bowl. Clean bowl. I've never set foot in the Cheesecake Factory, honestly. I grew up in South Florida, right? Broward County. That's all it was, was like these big institutional, you know, uh, chain restaurants. And I wanted to come up with a salad that the texture, crunch, savory, sweet, bang, sour, bang, the bang, whole thing. Right. All right, scallion, lots of scallion, black radish. So that's going to give it heat and crunch. This is where it's great right here. Grapes. Grapes, man. This is okay. crazy. That's where the sweetness comes from, right? All right, so now we have our, our dressing. This What's is, the base for this? Buttermilk or mayonnaise? Buttermilk. Buttermilk. Okay. Classic ranch. But the key to the ranch dressing is we pickle eggs and then chop it up and fold it through. Okay. All right, so black pepper, all about the black pepper, right? Nice pinch of kosher salt. Nice big bowl. Toasted and salted cashews. I just crush them in my hand a little bit. So the calamari is marinated in a little bit of buttermilk, chili flake, garlic thyme. And then this is a nice seasoned flour, cayenne, cornmeal, little AP. Let me go right into the fryer. Whole parsley? Right, whole parsley leaves. A little bit of fennel fronds. Right? This kind of just adds really nice herbaceousness going on. You want every bite to have a little mix, right? And then last minute. A little lemon to lighten it up and polish it. it. Done. This dessert is called Sweet Roots. It's a turnip panna cotta, carrot mousse, candy pumpkin seeds with a spice cake, cranberry orange marmalade, and ginger ice cream. How many years have you been here? This is right, so you went straight I've been from. Here for Five months now. And and, I, and you were at Aquavit right before that? I was at Aquavit right before that. How do you like working with Jesse? It's fun? It's fun. All right. Different. Good. Big change, but I like it. From this is how we do audio when you have the kind of budget that I have. Yeah. See, we're doing a two two location shoot, so the other cameras are the other location. We only have so many stick mics and so we don't use stick mics anymore. So we have so many lives, so this is how we this is how we do it. Yeah. This is no, high by tech. The way. Yeah. Yeah, by the way. Oh by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The lobster spaghetti we got. A little burr fondue, so just emulsified butter with a little bit of chili, some garlic oil, a little bit of uni in there. Fresh made spaghetti, we make it here every day. A little lemon at the end, a pinch of salt. Good to go. So, you have this great backstory that I just want to touch on it because who knew? We have this huge trouble with opioids and addiction. Yeah. Um, and our business is a really bad business. Yeah. It's full of drunks, it's full of drugs, it's full of excuses. So you grew up in Florida, which is kind of the epicenter of where this started. Yeah. You were in recovery now how many years? 11. But at some point, you were like the homeless guy. I mean, you're, you're like one of those cautionary tales that we heard about. A street kid. Oh, 100%. Walks out of his parents' house with a backpack. You read my book? I did. <laughs> and for the next year, you're just that, was it. that guy. Yeah, I was that guy. I was scheming and scamming. I was living on the street, waking up in mulch with bug bites on my face. and. Trying to figure out how to get enough money to hustling. get through the day to push the buttons to get high. That's it. That was all it was about for me. And, you know, I hit the, you know, every time I thought I hit a bottom, a trap door would fall and I'd fall even harder. Um, luckily, I got arrested and I got locked up for That's, a while. That scene you talk about. So you're in some neighborhood and you see the cops' cherries and you hear the whoop whoop. And in your brain, you're just like, 
take me. I was it. I won it. I was probably 150 pounds, dripping wet, track marks up my arms, and and they cuffed me. And I remember I smiled sitting in the back of the cop car. And the the cop turned around. And he goes, "What are you smiling?" And I said, "I'm getting my life back. I'm going to get my family back, and I'm going to do this." As soon as I got into jail, I transferred to a, a facility where I could do rehab, and I took a job in the kitchen. And I started working graveyard shifts in the kitchen. I remember touching food again, smelling food. And we're talking about making bologna sandwiches and ma mashed potatoes out of spuds. But to me, that, it sparked it. And like, I flipped a switch and I ran. And I ran and I cooked. And cooking. Had you cooked before that? Yeah, I was cooking oh, for that's years. That's what I thought. That's yeah. like you had been in restaurants and that's kind of how you got into I was working for the Mango Gang down right. in South Florida for right. years, all those guys. And, and, and that's how I got into drugs because right. I was really I that, that guy. I was, was that guy, yeah. I was 15, 16 years old, working in restaurants with 18, 19, 20 year olds, popping Percocet, smoking doobies, and like, I wanted that, and I did that, and that's really kind of what drove me down that path, but it, it brought me down, but it also saved my life, because, you know, the tenacity, like I think, I look back and I say, that addiction that I had, and what, what it put me through, it prepared me for being a restaurateur in New York. Mm. Because it's like, you gotta have some thick skin. I mean, just you're getting, you know, like, in, in terms of making deals, and just getting stuff done, and and stand on your feet for however many hours and never turning off. And uh, that's the know, business. So, yeah. Name of the book? All or Nothing. Great book. So if, I mean, I just remember when that came out, I was like, holy mackerel, we got to yeah. talk about this because yeah. we were neighbors and friends. Thank Sweet you, Jess. Man. Yeah, great to have you. This one's a lingcod dish. So on the base we have endive marmalade, some potato gnocchi, baby jam lettuce that we just caramelize, some marinated uh, clams and mussels, and we have a little bit of uh, fresh red endive, wine sap apples, and a little bit of fennel fronds. And then we finish that with a fennel uh, shellfish broth. We have portobello mushrooms. We give them like a real hard uh, saute just to intensify that flavor. Right, and get the water out. Draw the water out. A little bit of onion. Uh, at the moment, we're using uh, watermelon radish, chopped Par parsley. Okay. Uh, so the binder we were talking about. So again, it has you know a good amount of spice, heat from the mustard, black pepper, uh, sherry vinegar for the acid. You know, a lot of what we do is about replacing. You know, trying to find ways, creative ways, to add more produce into the meal. And this one really kind of came out um, from you know, this idea of steak tartare and doing a you know, vegetable version of that. Instead of going you know, fried egg or raw egg yolk on it, we basically went with a poached egg dressing. You know, this is the fat that we are gonna add back into the dish, all that kind of richness. Crispy fingerlings, garnish with a few greens. One of the things that fascinated me about the concept of Rouge from the beginning was as a chef who's trained old school, you know, how, how much we relied on fats, how much we relied on butter, on heavy cream, on olive oil, on salt. And then the big thing with rouge is healthy, so we have to strip that away. Talk about like how you wrapped your head around that and how it changed you. You know, in the beginning, it becomes unsecond nature, so you're very, you know, like, hey, I'm gonna make this dish, and, you know, okay, I'm gonna fortify this sauce with butter. And then so all of a sudden you're at the stopping point, okay, well, I'm gonna take something out of this dish, what am I replacing with it? to get through that, you know, to make the same kind of texture. Right, mouth, mouth feel, feel, unctuousness, right, right. So we went down the road of lots of infused oil, so we're kind of adding flavor back in in that way, or using those vegetable purees as bases for sauces instead of, uh, you know, butter, cream. Ma'am. You know, I think it's one of those things you put your spoon in, it's and so as soon good. as you eat it, you want to go back in for the next bite. I just did, it's so good. Ma'am, I'm not sharing this. You, you get another bite. Camera guys get nothing. I ain't playing. We're here with Pascaline Le Papier, who's been on the show numerous times because she's a sweetheart, she's a genius, and she's a rock star in the world of wine. And after her name, it has the initials M.S. Let us all bow. Uh, how, many, how, many, how many master psalms are there in America today? 120 something? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I so, so 120 something. How many female? Uh, we are 20, uh, 23 right now. 23, yeah. so you're one of 23. And just to give you an idea how hard this test is, last year in, in, in Denver, I think, the Master Somme exam, 60 some of the best sommeliers mm -hmm. in America and Canada took the test, and how many passed? Uh, yeah, it was very true. It was two, two or three. Yeah, it was like last year was very tough. Last year was amazing. So out of 60 of the best Somme's in the country, two or three passed. Yeah. You're an MS. <laughs> 
She's the best. <laughs> so we're here to talk about the, we, the old Rouge is where I met you. Yeah. And I was just so impressed with you, with oh. your ability to communicate, wine, be so down to earth. Do you want to marry me? Yeah, I do, I, I but you're already marry married you. and so am I, but it's, oh. it's the problem. Oh, oh well. I think but the, we can crush, still, the crush was mutual. We can drink wine and flirt. <laughs> um, so, so, but that Rouge was, you know, a huge space. And then it closed and the plan was to reopen down here in Chelsea, which is great. Yeah. This was delayed a year or two, but you're open. Talk about that. Just how did you spend that year or two? It must have been crazy for you. You know, you just carry on the project, and you know it's New York, and 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 New York is uh, is the best and the worst city maybe for building a restaurant. Um, yeah. And the rest of my time, I was I was fortunately able to travel a lot. You were in Loire, you were here, you're in Burgundy, you're saying, which is what you should be doing. I'm so lucky. You know how many how many people at that kind of mid career have this opportunity to to be able to really dive into their passion and let's make it happen at restaurant. I want that people I'm meeting all around the world, I want to be their voice here in New York. What percentage of your list would come under the term, we'll use the term natural, are we comfortable with that now? Uh, yeah, like, it's, a bit, it's a bit broader. I like, uh, I, uh, Bio, organic, what do you yeah, want to use? Yeah, agroecology, like it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a list with a conscious. Going behind the organic, biodynamic, natural label because everything now has been kind of yeah, taking over by marketing and all that stuff and just building a real relationship with all the producer we have on the list and I would say for 90 plus percent a direct connection with that person producing. Basically a chicken dish, so it's a heritage breed chicken. Uh, on the bottom we have a celery puree, sunflower seed celery risotto, braised kale, uh, charred baby leeks. Uh, we're gonna finish that with basically just the chicken jus. Steph, what do we have? Uh, so we're gonna do uh, basically our version of a carrot pie. This is supposed to resemble the crust, the crumb. Yep, so kind of very full spice, ginger, those bacon spices, cinnamon, um, and we basically just kind of bake it, pulse it up. This, uh, that's pastry, a carrot. Pastry cream, uh, but again, we reduce sugar and then uh, basically bulk it out with reduced carrot juice. Here, this would be the cream component, but okay. we do a, basically a ginger infused uh, Greek yogurt. So it's yogurt, yep. we're healthy, low fat. So we whip up. Uh, and then some fresh pineapple uh, that we're basically going to kind of mix in and garnish the top with. My idea was basically to open a, 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 a nice restaurant, not a health-related or health-conscious and sustainable restaurant, but then I kind of made a connection. I say people really get more and more uh, interested in the relationship between health mm. and food. Hello. And it might be a good idea to create a restaurant which um, kind of combine this relationship between health and food and which kind of address their fears. So we're basically gonna go in with uh, chicken liver. So what's this called on the menu? Uh, so this one's chicken liver. Period, uh, straight up. Straight, straight up. What do we have there, chef? A little bit of uh, maltaki mushroom. And this one's I enjoy as well because it's a like that old school kind of uh, pan sauce. <laughs> yeah, the way we learned to cook. Um, the way I learned to cook, anyway. A little bit of Swiss chard. What was the last bit you put in? Uh, so we just put in Different snails. Oh, that's what I thought they were. Yeah. Again, one of the healthiest proteins. You know, the old school part, we finished with a little shallot. Shallot with garlic. And I used to eat a lot of liver growing up, and it was always that, you know, the smell of liver and onions. Always, Coconut. and vinegar. It's amazing. Deglaze with the sherry vinegar. And then hit that with chicken jus. It's just the brown chicken stuff. So we do a little bit of grits, and kind of what we do with this is replace the dairy or you know buttermilk here with a celery root puree. That's beautiful. Yeah, there's something insanely satisfying about glazed yeah. meat. Uh, so this we get a little parsley puree, pickled shallots. Gorgeous. All right. Here we have an avocado puree. Keeps its nice green color from a Serrano vinegar. So then here we're gonna take our yellowtail. We're gonna add some of our pickled cucumbers, a little fresh cucumber, daikon, a pickled red onion, a little bit of jalapeno, some mint, basil, and cilantro. And then we're gonna dress it with uh, lemongrass oil and a little bit of a tamari, gluten-free soy sauce. So we'll just mix this up, make a nice flat surface here with a little more of the avocado puree oh, on the top. Gotcha, so it, now it's in every, every bite. Exactly. So then we take our sushi rice. So this has been seasoned with a little bit of salt and also some uh, Korean hot pepper. 
to finish, we have a fleur de sel finished with a little bit of uh, dehydrated kefir lime. And then we'll take some picked basil leaves, and that's it. That's beautiful. It's like flavor, pleasure in every bite. Buddy. We're filming this in 2016. It's not going to air until 2017. Yeah. In the spring, you have a book coming out with one of my other dear wine-loving friends, Alice Firing. Talk about the book what it, and what it's about. Uh, yes, it's like more Alice is writing the book, and I'm kind of the <laughs> I'm kind of the fearful of the of, of the career. And so she was like, oh, I'm kind of interesting to do a, a wine book for beginners, where instead of thinking about wine through varietals, which is diminishing a lot. Right. Right. Uh, and or to think about just geography. What about trying to do something about the dirt and the soil type? And we are both, you know, very sensitive to that question. You know, when you travel and you travel, when you are in the Douro, you see this schist, and when you're in Beaujolais, you see this granite, and you're in Bordeaux, you see this gravel. And right. we are not going to say, oh, it's because you have schist on the soil that you want this like schist. Uh, it's a whole other subject, so it's just opening a little bit the, the window and say, what about this this way of thinking? How often do I see people are at a restaurant or people are eating and the wine gets poured and the wine's on the table and they pick it up? It is, yeah. It's good. So help me, help an idiot. I, a you... Wine comes to the table and what, what do I do? What do I want to look for? I think what you need to focus on is the structure of your wine. And the structure is very simple, is the skeleton of your wine. It's like you, your body, how you are, like, are you tall, are you big or anything. And with the wine is acid, alcohol, tannin, gas and sugar. So you know how to taste acid. When you taste a lemon, you know what is lemon. When it's sweet, when it's bitter, when it's gassy, you know how to do that. When you come to my restaurant, nobody tells me I want a black currant wine with chocolate. Nobody says that. They want, oh, I'm in the mood for a light, refreshing red. Or I am in the mood with a kind of red wine with a bit of age with very delicate tannin. Or I want a big monster. Everybody talks about structure. Mm. So that's my trick. Gotcha. Think the wine is of structure. Gotcha. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home.